everyone. Um, my name is John Fonte. I'm doing this uh, paper in collaboration with uh, Joanna Oltean, that is uh, a professor in the Department of Archaeology of the University of, of Exeter. I'm doing a postdoc there. That's why we started this collaboration. I also need to stress that uh, Joanna is the real expert on Dacia, Roman Dacia, so I'm most like an outsider. So please excuse any possible mistake. Uh, but yeah, in any case, you have uh, our emails if you have uh, any kind of question or whatever. So I, I will try to be um, uh, the, the most specific as possible. So the, the idea of this presentation uh, uh, in, in relation with uh, this session, we are going to present some results, uh, some provisional and general resu results of a uh, uh, macro scale approach that we, 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 we have been working on Dacia, but mainly uh, focus on LiDAR data in this area because it has a big forest coverage. So it's very difficult to assess this area in terms of uh, using aerial photos or satellite imagery. So I'm going to present the, the uh, very general and the preliminary results because most of the field work and ground, ground truthing is still to be done next year. So this is like first approach, general, general things. Okay. So first of all, the, the location. Okay. Uh, just to get, give you an overview of, the, of course, located in in Romania. Uh, Dacia is the area we are working. Is also a uh, a frontier area of the the Roman Empire. Of course, the topic of the, the Dacian Wars on the on the yeah you see the dates on the beginning of the uh, second century AD. Uh, there's like a very big uh, publicity in big profile sources. You know, for one end we have the written sources, uh, especially mm, the Ocas uh, Cassius, and also some famous mo uh, monuments like the Trajan Column. So it's like uh, the Dacian Wars. Uh, seem to have like a very big importance. So our first uh, idea is try to look at the landscape, okay, to see if uh, these, uh, you know, these uh, uh, big uh, publicity about the uh, Dacian Wars is really ref reflected also on the landscape. So the idea is to try to see if we have a correspondence with this, okay, uh, with, uh, with some evidence that, that we can find uh, uh, on, the, on the landscapes. So the, the, the project was um, uh, focused on the surrounding area of the Dacian capital, okay? Sarmi Zegetusa Regia, okay? That is a world heritage uh, site. And mainly, this uh, starts around uh, 2010 or but in, in the scope of uh, a, a, um, a documentary uh, made by BBC about Rome's lo lost empire. You can search it on YouTube, I think it's, it's online. And they want to do like um, a chapter about uh, Roman Dacia, and uh, Joanna was a, a collaborator of this and this project, and so she proposed to do a, a, a lighter survey of this area because, it, as you see, he has a lot of uh, uh, tree coverage. You know, uh, there's a lot of already known information about the area, but uh, the, uh, the idea that we are still missing a lot of things. So that's why. Uh, the idea of trying to do a lighter coverage of uh, of of this area. <laughs> so in November 2011, you know, uh, lighter cover of the well, Sarmi Zegetusa is in this area, okay, the Dacian capital. This is 10 by 10 kilometers. Uh, is a, a, a well, a medium high resolution survey, more or less around eight points per square meter. It is quite good. For instance, in Iberia, we are used to work with. Uh, very uh, uh, low resolution data sets and uh, well the format of the deliver information is in last format and after the I when I get to Exeter uh, Joanna sent me the, the last files and uh, in the past months I have been processing all this data classifying and filtering uh, well of course trying to different filtering uh, uh, applicate that was like uh, I select like a, a small area to try to adjust parameters to try to achieve the best, uh, you know, uh, classification as possible. And when I achieve the, the well, the uh, inadequate, um, I process all the, all the, the area, uh, and then in the end I got all these uh, big, uh, you know, big, uh, big image. Then we apply, of course, different uh, classification techniques. Uh, 
a visualization techniques to try to enhance topography, okay. And this is basically all the features that have been mapped, that have been mapped in the in the in this in this area, no, uh, through the the, the lighter step. This is being most the work of <coughs> Joanna, okay. Uh, uh, she mapped different kind of uh, of uh, evidence. We are not going to look uh, in detail at most of the, of this ev evidence. The things that I'm going to be talk around more in detail. This is Sami Zegertuza Ledge, okay, the Lesian capital. This was another camp or fort, Roman camp. This was the only one that was known until that moment, and supposedly it should be related with the siege of the of the Lesian capital. And then through the lighter, a new uh, Roman camp appeared here to the southwest of uh, of uh, Sarmi, Sarmi. I'm going to say Sarmi for me is more <laughs> comfortable. And also in the northwest part, Corn, the, that uh, another big uh, this uh, Roman camp. So the, the idea then, after mapping of these structures, now we are trying to understand if these Roman uh, military sites that are surrounding uh, the capital, they are they could be related with the siege, with the attack of the the, the Dacian capital. So. So I'm trying in the first uh, step, I'm trying, okay, this is, of course, this is the map of the sites. Muncello, this is the only one, the, one uh, the, the only Roman military site that was known. He has some very strange but also interesting structures that we need to assess more in detail through, through fieldwork. Also, the biggest one, uh, Roman uh, camp, this is the Corno, the one that was, you know, on the northwest part. Okay, the Muncello is that one there was already no, and also this one, Sesuli. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for the names, and uh, yeah, this again a, a new Roman site that uh, has been found. So in the first step, after of course all this processing and interpretation of digital data, uh, I was trying to see if through uh, spatial analysis, GIS spatial uh, analysis. Uh, we could uh, get more insights about the possible, you know, relationship of these uh, Roman uh, camps and forts in relation with the siege and the attack of uh, of uh, of Sarbi. Okay, so this is basically the well. This is this map. These colors is a total view shed. This is basically what it gives us is the areas that are more topographically. And visual prominent, okay. These, of course, the red are the areas that are more visual prominent, and the, the green are the lowest. Uh, and, and and these lines, what they represent is intervisibility between between the sites. So from Chetuli, it can control directly uh, um, Sarmi. Also from Muncello, but from instance from Corno, it's impossible to see Sarmi. But in, in another way, he has visibility, intervisibility with uh, Muncello. I also express this like in, in graphs, you know, this is the total view shed result. You see how Muncello uh, and Sesuli uh, are more in higher positions, no, controlling uh, Sarmi, uh, Sarmi, and Corno is also in higher position, but doesn't have uh, whoa, intervisibility with, uh, with Sarmi. Also the area, you know, we see here, uh, Sesuli and Muncello are very quite small uh, uh, sites, you know, Roman military sites, and Corn is, is a, a much uh, bigger one, okay? Also, uh, trying to see if uh, this is basically uh, a natural network of pathways that, that, gr uh, that comes, that goes from uh, Sarmi, okay? This is just to trying to let us know, to understand the possible routes of movement from the outside, to the site, okay, the possible access, accessibility to the site. So this is just like a, a natural network of pathways that only has a point of origin and don't have a point of destination, you know, just to try to understand if there is good accessibility and is uh, between, for instance, the sites and the, and the capital or if the accessibility is bad. Of course, uh, these and these are in very, you know, uh, close relations with controlling the access through the Dacian capital, this seems to be more uh, related to, to other kind of aspects that you still, we still need to understand better. And that this is just to comprove this, the least cost path between the sites itself that give us the more potential, the best potential uh, way towards, uh, to, uh, between the sites in this case, not between the, all, all the landscape. 
and also try to understand, you know, the, the, the visibility and the mobility, the relation between both things, you know, between the, this is the, the visibility from Muncello, okay, from this side, okay, this one <coughs> is the, the nation capital, this is the visibility from Muncello, the idea is to try to understand the relation to, uh, relationship between visibility and mobility in the territory, and uh, it, it's very clear from the analysis that uh, Muncello overlooks Samizetuga and blocks the main hilltop to the north. Okay, is the main access of this this hilltop. So the, that site is clearly controlling controlling the site itself, but also the movement towards the site. Okay. Uh, this is the other one, uh, uh, Sechuli. Okay, this one in the uh, southeast. That again, he also overlooks uh, uh, directly uh, uh, Sarmi from the uh, southwest and control this possible connection between uh, between uh, both two sides. The other side is more the relationship between with uh, Sarmi is more uh, hypothetical. Is not so doesn't seem to have a very direct uh, relationship. In Corno, that is this one. Okay. Uh, there's no direct uh, visual control over Sarmi, but controls the access from the west and also from the uh, northwest. Okay, so these areas of mobility are of control. This side don't have uh, direct uh, visual relation with Sarmi, but at least it controls the access from the west to, to the side. There's also again a possible re relationship with Ulp Nation Ilford, that is this one. Okay. It doesn't have, uh, that is 1.5 kilometers to the, east, to the east, although there's no direct visual connection. So we are still not really sure about uh, the possible relationship with this site, with, uh, with also with this new wheel for and the, the Dacian capital. So more work still to be done. So just to finish, sum up some preliminary conclusions, okay? The camp uh, of Sesuli, that is one to the southeast, and the fort of Muncello, the one to the north, show the nature of uh, Roman effort involved in taking and controlling Sarmizegetusa Regia. The camp of Corno remains more problematic, as I told you, the one to the Norway. There's no obvious siege war. Uh, through the LIDAR we don't have any evidence of more complementary uh, uh, siege, uh, siege wars. Okay? Of course, the chronology of their occupation and their function remain generally unclear. So targeted fieldwork is uh, it's planned and is going to be implemented next year. Of course, we don't know. We are not really sure if all these sites are con contemporaneous. And it's even possible that uh, some camps can have uh, super, super, uh, super positions. No? Uh, um, so different sites in the, in, the, in the same area. So we still need to address that. And there seems to be like a disc, or disc, as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, the re relations in between, between the big commemorations of Dacian conquest and what we re really have uh, in terms of archaeology, you know, on the field. So there seems to be some kind of discrepancy between the commemoration of Dacia conquest, uh, you know, as I mentioned, from like for instance, Trajan's co uh, column, uh, and also the available archaeological evidence. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, it should be expected more, you know, more uh, archaeological available uh, evidence uh, in relation with uh, with the conquest of uh, Sarmi Zegetusa. So the conquest uh, of Dacia uh, in the beginning of second century AD. Can we maybe think about a deliberate political exaggeration of this conflict by Trajan? You know, just to trying to achieve more uh, more political. Ah, uh, missed the war. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, uh, so there seems to be like a, uh, you know, a discrepancy between the, the all the, the commemoration of Tassia conquest and the, the available archaeological evidence. And again, the work still to be done. This is like preliminary con uh, hypothesis, more than real work. So hopefully next year we'll have more evidence that can. Try to, to try to answer this kind of, of question. So again, just to say that in this case, remote sensing data was very important for us. We're trying to go beyond the tool, of course. We still have to do a lot of work, but the idea is also that we can also use, integrate this kind of approach, remote sense approach, landscape archaeology approaches, uh, in relation to specific historical questions, historical narratives. So the, the, this is the, be also uh, kind of the, the first 
the big idea of the, the of this session is you know to trying to go beyond the tool how can we integrate this kind of spatial data sets to try to help us to answer historical questions about specific uh, problems so yeah i think that's more about it thank you <laughs>